So, hello again. Thank you for uh, joining us again, uh, Mayor Provenzano, uh, and answering these questions. We we once again put out a call on Sue today, asking for readers to uh, submit what they they'd like to know uh, while we're still uh, in the midst of the uh, uh, you know measures being taken to to help fight uh, COVID nineteen. Um, again, so thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. Thanks to Sue today for doing this. I think it's important that uh, I be available to people and answer questions. Before we get going, I just want to take a chance to just uh, recognize and acknowledge all the mothers out there as we head into Mother's Day weekend and wish them all a tremendous Mother's Day weekend, including my own mother and obviously my wife, who's a great mother, and my mother-in-law, my sister, who is also a mother. So we just want to recognize uh, all of those fantastic people and the role they play in our lives. That's uh, very much true, and uh, yeah, thank you for doing that. Um, on that note, uh, nobody asked us about this, um, but Mother's Day is coming up, and I think you know we had Easter uh, recently, uh, where we had you know there were some issues people had to deal with there, and and, and uh, is, is that something? I mean, I mean, in your opinion, what should people be doing for for Mother's Day uh, at this point? Um, I think we're going to see a lot of people wanting to go and uh, visit their moms, and uh, yeah, uh, whether they be at home or uh, or in a, a residence somewhere. Uh, yeah. what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, so you know, my my opinion is going to be consistent with what I've said to date, which is that we need to follow the advice of our public health experts and. Uh, we really need to, to work together and do what they're telling us to do. So what they're telling us to do is still to, and this is a, this is important to make a distinction. This is a recommendation and a public health recommendation and not a provincial order. So, but the public health recommendation is that we uh, social distance and social distancing involves not only keeping two meters between you and uh, the person, someone else uh, that you don't live in the same household with, but it also involves not uh, socially interacting with people that you don't live in the same household with. So the public health recommendation would be that we don't go to each other's houses for Mother's Day and then we don't get together for Mother's Day dinners, um, that we, through the weekend, maintain uh, the same disposition that we've had to date, we've maintained the same effort we've had to date. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm gonna stick with that and encourage people to do that. For my own part, uh, we're not having dinner with either uh, Kylie's mother or my mother. Uh, what we've done is we've uh, uh, ordered them dinner from one of our local businesses, and we're going to pack the girls up in the car, and we're going to we're going to uh, deliver the food to the house and kind of have a window visit. So uh, Kylie's parents, and my parents, get to see the girls. Uh, we get to see them, uh, but we're going to give them their meals, and we're going to leave and go back to our house and have our own Mother's Day meal with uh, Kylie and the three and the three little ones. So um, you know that we'd encourage people to to as difficult as it is and as much as we all want to visit with our with our parents to continue to follow Oklahoma public health advice right and so so a lot of uh hopefully if people are following that advice a lot of window visits and uh -huh. and that sort of thing going on maybe Virtu or, virtual so, visits yeah yeah virtually as well yeah. uh which is very much possible obviously these days um you know, the, by far the 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 most commonly asked question um, that we got was, you know, when is this fire ban going to be lifted? Um, and I mm -hmm. I know right now we're under a Northern Ontario wide uh, fire restriction zone, um, so yeah. we're kind of waiting on the province to to act. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you think uh, mm -hmm. it's still warranted at this point? Um, well, we we if we lifted ours right now, you still wouldn't be able to have a fire. Right, because right. there's a so there's first thing we have to understand is there's a provincial fire ban, and that supersedes the municipal one. So whether we had one or not, uh, you wouldn't be able to have a fire. So uh, I have talked to senior city staff about this though, and and I've told them in my opinion, uh, when the province lifts theirs, we have to revisit ours, uh, because once the province lifts theirs, the only thing that's stopping people to, from having a fire then would be our own municipal ban, and uh, I've heard the same question you've got loud and clear. Uh, people miss it. Uh, people want to be able to do it, not only clean up their yards, but to sit in their backyard with their uh, spouse or their 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 family and enjoy a, a little uh, a fire. Um, it's become a common activity, I think. Uh, we have to do it, obviously, in such a way where we're always respectful of our neighbors, because the city actually does get quite a few calls from neighbors who, who ha have 
neighbors who have fires and not all the neighbors like it. So, you know, you got to be respectful of your neighbors and you got to make sure where the wind, the wind's blowing towards their house and their windows, you might want to reconsider having a fire that night. Um, but in any event, the city recognizes it's something that people really enjoy doing and want to see back. And I fully expect the city staff will bring it back to us uh, for our decision once the provincial ban is lifted. Uh, I'm sure the fire chief will make a recommendation and then then we'll we'll have a discussion about the best way forward. Um, for my part, I'd, I'd like to see, uh, you know, as many activities uh, that we can return safely to, that we return safely to, to get people some normalization in their lives. Right, because I, I mean, I, I, I think we see why people are asking for it. We're seeing in Southern Ontario, which isn't covered by the the pr provincial uh, restriction where communities are opening that up and maybe they're not as as uh, much in, in uh, danger of forest fires happening but I think people are seeing that and wondering you know we've been doing this for for years we know how to have a fire so yeah it'll be interesting to watch what happens with that uh, provincially uh, I, I guess a, a related question and people are wondering um, you know we've heard from the province that uh, marinas can start um, preparing for the season, putting boats in, in the water, but uh, not opening yet. Um, what about our municipal boat launches? I think uh, we've seen those blocked off in the recent recent weeks. Yeah, I, I think you'll see a change there really shortly. For my part, uh, and I've expressed this to, to senior city staff, I'd like to see uh, a launch open so that people can put their boats in the water and, and whether they like to fish or whether they wanna uh, go for a boat ride. Um, now that the province has adjusted its order on marinas, I fully expect city staff will make a launch available. We would just ask people when they do use the launch that they practice social distancing, like they give other people that might be in the same place looking to launch their boats at an appropriate amount of space so we don't have a lot of people coalescing and getting together and you know, potentially creating a risk. So uh, to answer your question concisely, I think you'll see that the launch is open shortly. We don't know exactly when, but, but soon, I guess. My impression and what staff has communicated to me is that it's in the works and I can't I can't kind of tell you exactly when the guys from Public Works will get down there to to move around what they got to move around. But I think it's 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 imminent and it's going to happen within the, the next short period. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. I got to please some people. Um, so an another person has asked, uh, and I'm trying to get to sort of the root of this question, but uh, I think we, we heard the premier, uh, I think last week, maybe or recently um say that you know the whole province is going to open up uh gradually together not uh, we're not going to see northern ontario or other reason regions open up uh, sooner even if even if the the, the the virus seems to be uh uh you know better controlled in those areas um is that something that you agree with is that something that you would be working with ross romano to to ask that Northern Ontario be open sooner or if it is opened and it has to be another closure that this is regionally kind of controlled and that maybe Northern Ontario wouldn't be shut down again? So uh, it, to answer your question uh, directly, Ross uh, and Terry and I speak regularly and on top of those uh, collective conversations where the three of us are together, I speak regularly independently to Terry and Ross. So these are issues that we talk about uh, frequently. With respect to the regional issue, though, I need to point out to people that it's not the same across Northern Ontario. Like, so yet yeah, we, we, our region's our region. Um, but when you look at our region, things didn't go the same in Sudbury as they did in Sault Ste. Marie. And they didn't go the same in Timmins as they did in Sault Ste. Marie. Things went really relatively well in Sault Ste. Marie and North Bay, but things were a lot more challenging uh, for Sudbury and Timmins. And Timmins really had a difficult time throughout this process. So, I, I don't know that you really could approach it on a regional basis because we're not all the same in the region and we didn't all have the same experience in the region. Uh, but I want to point out that, and I've been getting this a lot, Mike, over the last couple of weeks, our numbers are good. And people are saying to me, our numbers are good. We should be treated differently. Our numbers are good. Things should be adjusted. Uh, I've always been really insecure about trusting uh, the numbers alone because we were never really doing enough testing to be confident that the numbers produced an accurate picture. Now the province uh, did ramp up the testing. When the province ramped up the testing, the numbers actually got better, which, which gave me some confidence and I was, I was pleased to see that. 
but we still would need to do more testing to really be comfortable that the numbers are accurate. And I think what we saw last night and the news that was released last night that there are three positives in uh, the long-term care facility, Mapleview, uh, that were asymptomatic really should give us pause about really focusing on the numbers being good and us needing to change course here. The reality is, is that uh, this is a very uh, contagious disease. It's a very contagious virus. And people can have it that have really bad symptoms and have a really bad time of it. People also get it that have very mild symptoms or are asymptomatic. But those people that have mild system symptoms, they could pass it on just as easily as someone who has aggressive system symptoms. So we, we really have to be mindful of the fact that we are not yet out of the woods. And one of the reasons why things I think have gone well here, just like things have gone well in North Bay, is that we've had a lot of people working really hard to follow public health advice. And you don't want to change what you were doing uh, to make things go in the right direction when you get things going in the right direction. To keep things going in the right direction, you have to keep on doing more of what you were doing to get them going there in the first place. So I don't see the province taking a regional approach. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't see them doing that is it's hard to get people to stay in their own regions. And also because the region itself isn't consistent from community to community. So I think the, the province is, is going to continue to take a, a pan-provincial approach, um, but they might decide as they start opening things up to test case some places, right? They might decide if they're gonna try something, maybe we'll try it in some communities that have an easier had an easier time. Um, and you know, maybe in that case, Sault Ste. Marie will be one of those communities. But I, I doubt that they're going to to take take you know southeastern Ontario and and southwestern Ontario, and southern Ontario and then northern Ontario and, and and have different timelines and processes for each of those places. Um, I think it would be pretty complex to do that, and I think it would be challenging from the perspective that even within those regions, Mike, it's not all the same in each of the communities. Um, so in terms of, of testing, it was just to, sort of to follow up on this, um, you know, when you get the news from last night, um, you know, maybe this is a, this is probably a question for public health officials, but is, um, you know, is, is more testing something that you'd like to see more people being tested given yeah. that we're seeing people who are asymptomatic right now? I've always wanted to see as much testing as possible. Like right from the outset of this is I, I thought testing was key. I looked but I want to make a, uh, you know, kind of an important distinction here. The testing protocols are coming from the province, as I understand it. So the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care really is the body that's setting the testing protocols. I, I don't believe that Algoma Public Health independently is determining uh, what the protocols are and how many people that they would be testing or like they're working with the province at large. Uh, Public Health Ontario advises the province, the Ministry of uh, health and long-term care makes decisions. And I think it's working as, as one unit. I've always wanted to see more testing from uh, the government. And frankly, when they increased testing, I was, I was happy they increased testing. Uh, we spoke, Ross and I had spoken about that and I thanked him for that. And I think it's a positive thing. Um, you know, we are, there are some limiting factors like access to swabs. You gotta remember this testing is going on around the world, Mike, right? It's going on throughout the whole country. And so the, the infrastructure for this testing really had to expand very quickly. So there was always a limiting factor. The availability of the tests was a limiting factor. The availability of the swabs was a limiting factor. The availability to process the testing is a bit of a limiting factor. So I think everybody's doing the best they can to, to test as much as they can, uh, but more testing uh, is positive. It will be good if we can get as much testing as possible because then I think you get a much clearer picture in the respective communities of, of what actually is happening. Excellent, thank you. Um, we'll move on to, I guess, just a, a, a different subject. Um, it's, it seems from some of the questions we got that uh, people are still just, uh, you know, concerned about what's happening with small businesses and uh, and what's being done to help them. I think we're seeing some of the restrictions uh, lifted coming up soon that will maybe allow some of the curbside pickup, etc. Uh, but people are, con are are curious as to what. Um, what the city has done uh, to assist small businesses right now. Yeah. I actually made a list, Mike, because I didn't want to miss anything because I think yeah. city staff and the economic development staff and the tourism staff have, 
uh, worked really hard on this and I think they've done a good job and I wouldn't do them justice if, if I didn't kind of outline all the things they did do. So I made sure I made a list before our call. So if you don't mind, I think, and this is our fifth call, I've never read anything to date, but I'm gonna just go look at this list and make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. So city council uh, waived interest and penalties on the May 5th in tax installment. So we allowed for deferred tax payments. That's not just for residences, it's obviously commercial tax payments also. So that would help small business. Uh, we suspended the collection of the municipal sewer surcharge for April and May. So businesses pay that. We have commercial accounts. It's not just residential accounts. We've had interest and penalty provisions for the remittance of the municipal accommodation tax. Municipal accommodation tax is a tax that hotels have to pay. And we've uh, waived uh, interest and penalties for that. So uh, with the hope of helping them with their cash flow through this time. And uh, we've inter it waived interest on accounts receivables until June 30th. Uh, we set up a business hotline and help desk where we answer questions and provide business support. Uh, we have a web page in the city website, document all the resources available to business. So we've gone through and taken all of the different programs and resources that our other levels of government have made available. And we, we update that website daily for businesses so that they have a one-stop shop and they can come and look at what's available to them. We launched suetogether.ca to showcase and, and provide support to local businesses that are open during the pandemic. Uh, and we continue to support that and drive traffic to, to that page. Uh, we support businesses with ongoing training, counseling, programming during the outbreak. And uh, we've had our team here that have uh, uh, worked with some different sectors to look at what we could do for uh, providing support and advice. And we developed a series of webinars to support local businesses with partner organizations. And we did a survey with AWIC, the Algoma Workforce uh, Investment Corporation, to gather data from businesses to get a better sense of what they needed and what we can do to help them. So, you know, we've been at the outset primarily focused on public health and, you know, our citizens' health. But at the same time, we've had a team here at the city uh, and through uh, Tom Vera's department, our economic development staff, our tourism staff, who have been constantly working on connecting with our businesses. I think you're aware we, we've done and, and you folks help with this. And I want to thank your, your company for doing that. I think we've done five calls with local businesses conference calls and I, and I think uh, Village Media has helped us coordinate those and promote those. So uh, we've worked hard to keep in touch and to see what we need to do. And uh, I'll have a, uh, a call tomorrow with the Chamber of Commerce and Terry and Ross and we'll listen to the questions they have and we'll, we'll work on a going forward basis to continue to support our small businesses. What are, what are you hearing from small businesses right now? Like what at this stage of things, what are their their big concerns locally? What's the well it's it's very it's very uh industry based, right? I mean, look at tourism, like look at our hotels, like our hotels and our motels. There's a they're alarmed, you know, uh at how empty the hotels and motels are. And that's disconcerting. But we gotta recognize that's this that's across the province and across the country and frankly around the world. People just aren't traveling to the same degree, but they're really, they're really down. So there's you know, you range from really significant concern and alarm to some businesses who have transitioned really quickly to to, to get some online uh, engagement and to some of our restaurants who who have told me they're they're doing pretty well and you know they've kind of changed their business model a bit, but they're finding creative ways to to get keep their revenue so they can keep things afloat uh, and then you have like you know uh, places like our professional businesses like my own business where you know you're not seeing you know uh, any clients so you're not seeing uh, you know you know you want to make sure your staff is safe and your your businesses aren't open to the public uh, but you're trying to get a little bit of work done and keep on top of things so it's it's a whole it's a wide range but I got to say there are a lot of supports that have come from our federal government. There's a, a interest-free loan that you can access to help with your cash flow. Uh, there's a 75% wage subsidy that a number of businesses can access, and that makes a big, a big difference. So, you know, we're looking at those programs and we're hopeful that our local businesses are accessing the programs that are available to them and that they're getting some relief. Uh, yeah. So uh, Christian, we lost you for a, a, a minute there, but I, um... I think we'll just carry on. We'll grab one more question and then uh, and then let this fade out. Um, so I, I think this one is somebody who's asking for sort of some some advice here on how to deal with this. It's somebody who um, you know is a person with a disability, um, and they're they're asking how do I maneuver when I'm trying to go to um, the grocery store or, or other businesses that sort of off, offer a, uh, a, an early time for seniors and people who are at risk. Um, 
uh, they're saying they're having a hard time, you know, actually uh, getting in and being accommodated there. Do you have any thoughts in terms yeah. of how one might approach that, approach that? So I really appreciate that question. It was important that that was raised with me. Um, the first thing I want to say is if you're having difficulty, uh, call our hotline. Uh, if we can help you, we will help you. The hotline number is 705-574-1220. That's 705-574-1220. But what I did, Mike, when I got this question is I, I uh, spoke to the CEO about it and, and uh, uh, we have an accessibility office uh, at the city and we we have referred the question to the accessibility office because if there's more that needs to be done by our retailers to support people with disabilities, uh, we want to see that that work is done. So uh, we are going to uh, take this issue up today and we're going to look at the issue and we're going to see what, uh, if anything, the city could assist with or support retailers with to make it easier for people with disabilities to shop during this time. So so thank you for raising that with us. Uh, I can tell you it uh, we've taken it to heart and we're looking at it and uh, we're giving it uh, to our accessibility office to help us assess and we'll do whatever we can to support and assist. Okay, that's great. Well, I want to thank all of our readers for bringing these uh, questions up and uh, and getting them out there so that we can, uh, you know, ask them to you and you can you can help as, as much as you can in terms of, you know, clarifying these things for people and, and giving them some perspective here. Uh, well, once again, thank you uh, for, for joining us. Um, that's all the questions I have for today. Um, and hopefully we'll do this again. Uh, before the end of next week sometime, maybe. Um, anyways, thank you very much. Yeah, If before we step off, Mike, if I can sure. just reiterate one important message, I think. Uh, I want to recognize that we've done really well as a community and that our numbers are uh, in, in a good place and that uh, we we have managed through this pretty successfully to date. Uh, but we can't we can't let up. We, we can't look at those numbers and determine that we're through this a pandemic because we're not and I think we really need to all reflect on the news we got last night that we have three new positives as an indication that we really need to all stay committed uh, we need to listen to Algoma Public Health's advice if you have any COVID-19 symptoms you need to self-isolate if you don't have COVID-19 symptoms we're asking you to stay home as much as possible when you do go out if you have to go out please practice physical distancing and please continue to frequently wash your hands. It's the easiest and best thing that we can all do to keep this virus at bay. So I wanna thank you and everybody on your team for this, uh, Mike, we appreciate it. I'll obviously be back to speak to the community if, uh, if you'd like to have me. And again, heading into Mother's Day weekend, I just wanna wish everybody a great weekend and I wanna wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day.